Oh yeah. So I'll do all the cards. That's it. That's how we're back on track. Isn't it? And you know what's really curious is I copy and paste with the uh, audio showing up magically, right? Yeah. I don't need that software, those updates. I'm not even using that stuff. It's good, right? Hey? Yeah. Not needed. Oh, it doesn't seem to be taking out the part. I think we're good now. It's like for that. That's awesome. <laughs> Scotty and uh, we have a winner for the tickets to the yeah. Sci-Fi Spectacular oh. and that is Wes and uh, he correctly identified George Takai. Takai. He gave me both names. Yeah. Sulu, I think. Yeah, Hakaru yeah. Sulu, I believe was his. I believe was his what? first name. Hakaru Sulu. Well, they say on uh, Jeopardy the last name they do. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. I don't know if it's actually says here, but I think it is. Uh, guest conductor Jack Everly is a wealth of TV and movie knowledge, as well as being one of the most engaging pops conductors on our planet. We travel with Jack to the edge of the universe with music from the biggest and best science fiction TV shows and movies, including Close Encounters of the Third Kind, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Star Wars, 2001, A Space Odyssey, oh, and more. Yeah, movie kit today. Special guest mm -hmm. George Takai, Sulu from the original Star Trek, provides dramatic... Dramatic Reading. narration. I think that's yeah, I know it. That's so yeah, smart. He's apparently quite engaging too. Um, his talks. Uh, soprano uh, Kristen Plumley and Manitoba's own Prairie Voices chorus add to the far out fun. Well, see, there's a good mix. It's probably better uh, on the radio. Or or on the, on the concert. Internet, this, and there's, this there are, here, you're just yeah. identified probably yeah. three or four different audiences. Yeah, because and there's a time flag in the London radio. Do, thing. To the West End Theater. Well, between the phone and the Arsenal come in different times. Yeah. So if you have them all One on One of the actresses had come from Coronation Street, uh, who played Mavis of Mavis and Derek there. 
And they'd also had uh, a couple well, of we young actors who were just getting their start, a bit of TV work, etc. Well, we've got the right number. And well, I'll give a number. Yeah. But total loon in Arsenic and Lace, they had the actor who played okay. Kramer on Seinfeld. Right. So you get the American tourist audience, the old timers well, who recognize Kramer, so you, and you've got a, a, a chestnut that you can't yeah. go wrong with Arsenic and Old yeah. Lace. Hmm. Yeah. Speaking of New York, of course, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra is going to, going to Carnegie yes, Hall next yes. spring, and uh, it's interesting in the uh, in their in their encore in their brochure, um, they had um, profiles of a number of symphony employees, and and they were of course asking them about New York, what food they would eat, and whatnot. One of the questions they were asking is if you wanted to run into somebody in New York, who would it be? And a few of them actually right. said Jerry Seinfeld. So. Right. Uh -huh. Profile and who would you like to have a cup of coffee with? And yeah. Just let him run on. You wouldn't have to have a conversation. Just yeah. give him a topic and away you go. Right. Yep. Well, it's uh, 9 a.m. and do you know what? I we I haven't uh, we haven't done the weather yet, but we may as well wait for a few minutes because it's going to change at 9 o'clock or just shortly thereafter. So we may as well hang. It was like decent when we came in, John. It was decent when we came there in, and, uh, expected and to get that's better. expected to get more decent. Yep. And, uh, so, but. Um, do you have something uh, that Bob you want to do next? Do? Let me pass this over to you. I'll tell you why. Up yeah, with I guess, uh, can we play cut one and cut two, I think? Mm -hmm. I'd like to have played the whole thing. That would have been 12, 15 minutes, I think. So how about just cut one, cut two? Because this is a strange story, but I, but I tell you, it's the rest of the story, as uh, they used to say. And a true story, and that is... <coughs> When I first started listening to classical music, I came to probably to Beethoven through the Peanuts cartoon strip, you know, uh, with Schroeder playing his little toy piano. I used to walk down to the William Library, which of course is now government offices. That's the house that Carnegie built, one of the Carnegie libraries that Andrew Carnegie put the money up for. He said, as long as you are willing to make it a library and make it free, I'll give you the money. And so we have, I think, three, Cornish, St. John's, I think, and, uh, and William. So they had LPs. And I used to go in there, and just the idea of listening to something for free, I suppose, as well. John, it goes deep. It goes deep in me, as you you already know. We I go to the <laughs> on Sunday for free from the book of Soul to the Midway Cafe, and I read my free, free press on Sunday. So it's too late to change now, John. Mm -hmm. As Van Morrison used to say, it's too late to turn back now. So anyway, I go into the William Library, and I'll, now I'm going to shorten the story and simply say, I, I for some reason, I pulled out, a Benjamin Britten recording of the <coughs> pair singing, and it's the uh, serenade for tenor, horn, and strings. And so there were several things I heard. First, the prologue, uh, and then, in particular, the uh, Queen and Huntress, Chaste and Fair. I'd never heard anything like it. And you'll agree his voice is unusual. And of course, Benjamin Britten and he were friends, and Britten <coughs> wrote things <coughs> using uh, the best of his voice. How could we write for him, etc.? So I thought, I listened to it, now that's over 40 years ago, <coughs> and maybe rarely I've heard a hint of it on the radio. But I'm in London about a year ago, and of course the anniversary coming up, and now it is the anniversary for, uh, for Benjamin Britten, and I found a box set of Peter Pears, the anniversary tribute. So I couldn't resist, and uh, it still makes the hair on the back of my neck go up. It's mm. Benjamin Britten's Serenade for Tenor Horns and String. Uh, can we hear the prologue? And then, uh, um, that's very short, and then I guess let's go to the pastoral, the day's grown old. That's cut one and cut two. How about that? That sounds fine. And of course, uh, the Manitoba Chamber Orchestra has a recording of that as well, so you've probably right. heard that, right? Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and I can move it up to the next level, too, anyway. All right. The wind is southeast 27 kilometers an hour, so it's gotten a what? bit windier than it was. It did. Is it really doing it? And 74% uh, relative humidity. Uh, Don't worry too much. So, to God, John, you're like the Irish Wolfhound. Depending on how thin your hair is, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, so, it could be in a meek of Cujo. So, that comes from Environment Canada. And that's your up to date uh, weather conditions. I don't think he knows that Reed's not in it anymore. He's now, of course, so that for everybody that listens to this program, they know it's somewhere on the midpoint of the shore. So, I have my what I call my From the Garden feature, which is a piece by Secret Garden. And. The last again. a couple of weeks or so, I've been drawing from uh, this um, double CD called The Ultimate Secret Garden, and the second we'll disc of that has got that, um, the tracks, some of the tracks from the uh, 
Secret Garden DVD, a night with Secret Garden, so it's a live performance. And so we're going to hear uh, a live performance of Song from a Secret Garden, and uh, taken from that DVD, a night with a Secret Garden. And uh, so you will notice that it is live, yes. And uh, that will be today's From the Garden feature. Hi, we're Secret Garden. I'm Fanula Sherry. And I'm Rolf Loveland, and you're listening to Shades of Classics. On CKUW with John Iverson. <laughs> okay. Oops. Listen to me, John. I've played the anvil. There you go. With you know the anvil chorus. The anvil chorus. Bing, yeah. Bang. Bing. So, uh, John Iverson, Fred Penner, and Al Simmons were in uh, Air Cadets together. Core 170, St. James, Winnipeg trivia. Brought to you by LSD 25 Records. John Iverson. We did it straight, and that was fair, and the kids loved it, so. Mm -hmm. Scared them, too. Mm -hmm. Sitting around listening to the radio, the radio Kamar is supposed to be on there with John Rock group. Like, you're find something you like a piece that they did together a while back, and mm -hmm. it's going to be on the 95.9 Kamar? Yep. 95.9, it should be on soon. Uh, uh, minute now. Uh, we yeah, so we're going to listen to that, and then I'm going to get washed up and get dressed, and I'm going to head over for coffee. And... Okay. Haley's uh, talk so, this week, which is uh, resumed after a, a hiatus for the summer, okay. is called the concerto. Yeah, She's going to tell us about the concerto, and while she does that, we're going to listen to a, a little bit of uh, Mozart during the talk. Concerto is an Italian word, and it comes from two different Latin words. Concerere, which means to tie or join, and concertare, which means to compete or even to fight. And so no one really knows if the soloists and the orchestra are working together or working against each other, and perhaps it's best not to ask. The concerto started out as a form that really was unique to Italian music. The Italians wanted it to be their own thing. The problem was that at the time everyone wanted to be Italian and everyone wanted to write Italian style music. And so composers from all different countries started to write concerti or concertos. And so after a while people totally forgot that the concerto was supposed to be an Italian thing. In its early days the concerto was usually a small group of instruments being accompanied by a small orchestra. The two groups went back and forth and people loved it. But as time went by things began to change. Two centuries later, musicians started to be thought of as artists, as geniuses, as people who were going to be made immortal through their art. This hadn't been the case at all in previous centuries when musicians were truly seen as servants. However, when this new attitude set in, the concerto became a vehicle to show off the talents of one single soloist. Concerti became long, and they were full of notes and full of chances to show off. And that's pretty much how things have remained to this present day. Performers love to put their skills on display, and audiences love to watch them do it. Haley Rampel with her two-minute talk, the concerto, and uh, while she was doing that in the background, you heard the uh, very recognizable piece of music, the adagio from the clarinet concerto in A by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart with uh, clarinetist Roger Follows in the City of London Symphonia under John Rutter. Very interesting. Her talks are, are very interesting, and they're very much like what she does in her concerts. She provides a lot of uh, history and uh, not just in words, but in pictures as well. I did like the example of the uh, orchestra fighting with the instrumentalist and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, there was a lot of that. And, and uh, also even with uh, with singers, there was, that was maybe even more so. <laughs> Unless you're Toscanini, he didn't yeah. stand for much difference of opinion. He was quite the um, a bit of a martinet when it came to that as well. And if he got really upset, he used to go on and or I smash his watch with John Iverson and Rod Robinson and we are uh, bringing you past the mic here on CKUW and uh, this is a lot of fun 
enjoy it myself, John. And mm -hmm. of course, I brought more than we needed. But well, I, I, I did too. But, but, uh, because I was concerned, of course, I know you have things that have to happen. Well, I only have one more thing that has to happen, okay, so good, we've, we've, got, we've got time for some more stuff. Yeah, so just uh, make this gesture of cutting across your mm -hmm. throat, John, and I'll let it start. Uh, sometimes when I do interviews, I have to do that, but uh, no. <laughs> um, so what have you got next stuff here? Well, it's funny, because I'm not sure how this will play. That was the first sound. Here's the second sound. Higher or lower? <laughs> Any Americans in? Like to tell us what type of gun that was? <laughs> okay, uh, here's a simple rhythm test. Here we go. Good. <laughs> now, a bit hard. Here we go. You're good, well really done. Good, <laughs> so, uh, can I also ask, does anybody actually play a musical instrument? Don't be nervous, I won't pick on you. Anybody at all? Used to play one and gave up. Put your hands up. Anybody? <laughs> yes, yeah, so the yeah, other people, yeah, basically, yeah, the rest of us. Yeah, we used to. <laughs> Most people have one brush with a musical instrument at school, the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people chuck their recorders away at the end of their school time, or they, you know, they ruin them by experimenting with, you know, nose music. Or... <laughs> Bottom music. <laughs> if that's the case, let me tell you, you shouldn't have done all the world's great music can be played on the humble recorder. Listen to this beautiful example. Fantastic world. Oh, sounds like oh, that. Six recorder now, the thing about the recorder is it does enable us to begin the journey, all classical music explained. Because, of course, when you learn to play the recorder, you learn how to read music. Now, you may not have done this for some time. Oh. Had to cut him off. Yeah. 9.30. Uh, well, I bought that from Rainer Hirsch, and of course, he does go from cut to cut to cut, but uh, yeah, you can, he's quite the smart ass. You can tell how much he enjoys himself. Not everybody responds to that. I really love when he came to town here at the Fringe, and he's been several times with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. So he's carved out a career for himself. It helps, of course, it's funnier if you know the piece he's talking about, first of all, and you don't treat it as whole classics with uh, John Iverson and Ron Robinson, and... Uh, about half an hour left, I guess. And uh, Ron, what else do you have? Well, John, we talked earlier. I think it was uh, two tubas. The two tubas on the symphony, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Filling up the entire stage. So mm -hmm. I did pull my tuba CD, and I used to use I forget who it was at CBC. It just was lovely behind a little storytelling. Oh, I thought <laughs> on our show, on Saturday morning show, six till eight, we play music and the instruments we feel are overlooked and underappreciated. Mm -hmm. I could be the zither. Trombone. Certainly the ukulele. The ah, if you feel that, I'll pick something out. <laughs> It'll probably be something from the 1930s, but... Uh, <laughs> well, the kazoo. Do you have a favorite trombone player, though? Or that's no, recorded? Just, or just, just a, I have a friend at... Uh, I have a friend at... Uh, where I used to work that uh, played trombone in school band, and he was always talking about playing trombone music. And I, I did actually... I had a... CD, there's a CD in the library here right. called The Art of the Trombone. I actually played something. The Vert number two in B-flat. We have the Allegro and then the Minuetto. Anyway, so it's up to you for the the whole thing there. It's about three, going on three, four minutes, where you put cut one and cut two together. So as I say, the tuba we play occasionally, the ukulele, the zither, um, the accordion, of course. People who are prepared to play it in public, we're always prepared to uh, play them, and not everybody knows where we are, and we lock the door as well when we play these things. <laughs> so that we can beat our door out. Didn't, uh, wasn't Jürgen Goth a big fan of the tuba? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I should say, as well, as I look at this God. again, every Saturday morning at about 6.15, we say thank you, CBC, because when they sold off their record libraries into the music, the record store bought them. Then he's since then been flogging off 
he realized he'd probably more than he could sell at full price, etc. So a month, several months back, we bought 140 CDs on a grand sale he had. So each Saturday morning, we play something that originally came from CBC. the CBC Record Library. There you here go. Or right. There you go. Not the least one here. Government will overweight. So here's your, uh, <laughs> some garbage in the end. Here's your tuba. Oh, he's still got it. Dose of tuba for the day. You know, whatever you want. Garbage. You can even sell it. 140 of them. Take them. No kidding. Ten cents each. It's uh, 9.36 a.m., uh, 20 minutes or so left in the program, and uh, I do have something uh, local up next, and um, this is a, a brand new uh, composition of uh, violinist John Ricardo. John is the um, artistic director of the uh, Musica Speciale concert series, and also is the uh, principal violinist of that ensemble, and um, he has a concert coming up on Friday, September 27th, 7.30 p.m., and it's called Maximal Amplitude. And uh, he has a special guest, uh, a pianist from New York by the name of Martin Soderberg. And uh, on the program, he's uh, doing works by uh, Sid Rabinovich, uh, Lavasur, Albanez, Soler, Granados, Infant, Sarasade, Defaya, and one of his own compositions, not the one we're playing this morning, but it is one of his own compositions that he's doing in that program. And uh, that concert takes place at Bethel Mennonite Church. And we have uh, tickets available for that. And so you can call uh, during the music while we listen to this, and Mr. Robinson here will take your uh, information down if you'd like to go to the uh, Musica Speciale concert on September 27th, Maximal Amplitude. And what we're going to hear by uh, John Ricaru. It's a new piece that uh, he uh, just uh, composed, and uh, it's part of a new CD that he's working on. And um, what he's actually performing in the concert is a Sunrise Sonata, and it is being performed for the first time at this September 27th concert, and it was uh, spontaneously inspired in the same manner as this song that we're going to hear this morning, which is called Sweet Morning. And John Ricaru is joined by uh, Kumar and Reddy, for this piece, Sweet Morning, and 204-774-6877. Give us a call if you'd like to go to the concert on September 27th, Maximal Amplitude, Musica Speciale.
Tapi ada kalau yang sungguh saus
was violinist John Ricardo, guitarist Kumar and Reddy, and uh, it's titled Sweet Morning, new composition by John Ricardo, and congratulations to our two winners of uh, tickets to the upcoming Musica special. That was us, we got our own tickets. We'll be, we will be right back after these Bye. messages.